Wonderful. God bless so much. Thank you for uh, subscribing to our YouTube. Jesus loves you. We also reach out to you with his love. Oh, wonderful. God bless you so much. Uh, we prayed. Now it's time for the word. And I know you are awake to hear God speak. The blood of Christ cover you. The Holy Spirit overshadow you. The word of God is powerful around your soul. Fear not. God bless you. Remember, we are now in part three. Our topic is, let not your heart be troubled. Now, something else that to cause us to win battles and our hearts are not troubled is to attack Satan and make sure you attack his weapons. Normally, whenever we live, there are those weapons that the evil one uses. The, most people don't, uh, don't uh, deal, with the, deal with the devil to the level of weapons. And that's why Jesus in Luke chapter 11 verse 21 talked about overcoming Satan to the level of weapons. Yes, he says, verse 20, but if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own polish, his goods are in peace. When a stronger one, Jesus is talking about his being stronger than the devil. He is casting out demons because he is stronger than the devil. And he's saying, a stronger person, a stronger person by, than Satan comes upon him, overcomes him, and takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and devises prayers. Now, this particular part of taking away from Satan all his armor is becoming very tricky. Because I've come to realize as I pray for deliverance, as I pray for deliverance, things are becoming complicated. It's not just saying I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Number one, two things are important. Make sure, make sure you are stronger than the devil. Live a life where you really build capacity stronger than the devil. Number two, make sure if you are, move, make sure that you go towards him. You can be strong, but you never attack. Go towards the devil. Attack him. If he's in a person, attack him in that person. I say if he is in a woman, he is in a child, he is in a situation, attack the devil in that situation. And finally, in Jesus' name, discern and identify the weapons the armor that he is depending upon and make sure you disarm him. That level is strange. Sometimes I've, I've discovered things. Discovered things. It's becoming more strange when somebody, when you are able to discern that somebody is using an item. There are those who, things are becoming, there's one who I was able to discern that the powers she was using to kill, to destroy families, were in her eyes. And when I discerned, that was the end of the operation of the devil in that girl. Yes, I was able to discern one had a ring. And I, was, and I said, I, I pointed at it as a bishop. I said, it has to be removed. And the person became disarmed and powerless. I said, by the grace of God, let us attack Satan and his weapons. That's very important. Note the weapons. Note the areas that he is specifying. The other day we attacked, we were able to, I was praying for families, and the this lady who came up, powerful, said, Bishop, why are you declaring the new altar of the blood of Jesus in families? I am the one who rules over family. And she, I destroyed those powers. And she said, Bishop, I have killed so many people. 
Number two, I destroy families. And number three, I'm able to instill or to put the spirit of prostitution in people. And I tell you, we have to destroy that. It's not a simple job. You need to rise up and live a life of a stronger passion than the devil. The problem we have, people don't live that life. Eh? The only thing we do is maybe when you are going for a meeting, when you are going for a crusade, that's when you rise up, pray a little bit, gather some strength. But it should be a lifestyle whereby I'm always armed and stronger than the enemy. That's very important. Uh -huh. Another thing is that do not stay with a satanic stronghold. Do not stay with a stronghold. Do not stay at that stronghold. There are times in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that families, individuals, are living at the stronghold as a, a kind of spirit or a kind of power that has built up and, and has permanently tortured, oppressed a family of a person. Or that power is producing a pattern of attacks. I remember one time I noticed uh, 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 part of my relatives, the brothers to my mom, uncles, they died following each other. With, the first one died of lung cancer. The second one died of leg cancer, joint a cancer in the something in the leg. The third one died punk, cancer of pancreas. And I and I, I decided, how can that happen? I went up to that place with my, some pastors and destroyed that. And I tell the truth, it has never happened again. We need do not live at the strongholds. Don't don't allow your family to live at the limitations of the devil, whereby. A family never gets good employment, or people never come out clearly. Yeah? You find that your family has an attack of immorality. A family has an attack of a certain disease, ailment that kill people. Often, we need not to stay with those strongholds. And I tell you, we need to pray and pray and rise up and face the stronghold. A stronghold also is a weakness. A weakness can be a stronghold because a weakness opens up to attack. A weakness is an evil or, or a weak area in your life where you are easily ensnared, where you are easily attacked. We need to be very careful. Another thing is pray deeply. When Jesus noticed the dark hour, is nearer. They are getting closer to the attack. He called the disciples in Luke 22 verse 40 and Christ said to them, Christ said to them when he came to the place where? The place where the attack was to be. The place where the enemy was to attack. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. That's very important. If you go to verse 46, uh -huh. then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray. Rest you enter into temptation. Why? Lest when the attack comes, you misbehave. Lest when the attack comes, you will not be sober. Lest when the attack comes, you run away. Lest when the attack comes, you will be destabilized and you will be caught unaware, and you not have a breath to the start. Remember what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13? Eh? Put on, take on, take up the whole armor that you may with the start the, in, in the day of evil, with the starting, pray deeply because an attack is coming and you need to with the start. You need to speak what should be spoken. You need to act the way that you should act. You need to rise up the way you ought to be. You, you see, when you're not prayed enough, an attack comes. You find yourself feeling, saying things that you're not supposed to say. Going to places you're not supposed to go. Withdrawing. You are supposed to start for God, but you failed. That's very important. Yes, that's very important. Another thing is that 
Overcome in every stage of life. Accumulate, build up a life with stages of victory. Don't build a life with stages of failure. Let when you look back, you can gather courage from, the, from what has happened in several stages. If you look, look chapter 4, Jesus overcame Satan in three ways. He, he, Satan tempted him. He overcame when the devil said, change bread into stone. Throw yourself down. Bow to me. And the Christ said, Satan, get behind me. Get behind me, devil. And the Bible says, angels took over. Made a start to Christ. And Christ went back to Galilee, full of power. And he was able to tell people, the Spirit of God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable ear of the Lord. Jesus came out of those tests, full of power and anointing. Bible says he went back to Galilee. If you read Luke chapter 4, 14, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee and news of him went out through all the surrounding regions. And whenever demon could see him, they would say, we have nothing to do with you. You have come to destroy us. You are the Holy One of God. I say, by God's grace, that's what, pray deeply. Overcome in every stage. You know when you overcome, you are building up strength. Building up strength from glory to glory. Glory to glory. When you overcome step by step, you are teaching Satan some lesson. You are saying, devil, devil, this is who I am. I'm not weak the way you ought. I know how to pray. I know how to depend on the Lord. I know how to use the weapons. Build up power. Build up courage. Let your life have successful victories. You can speak like David who looked back when he was so discouraged and when Saul talked about how big, how strong, how experienced God he had was, the devil stood up and said, gentlemen, Mr. King, I killed bear. I killed lion. And God earth will be like one of those. And Saul said, ah, David, now I understand you. May the Lord be with you. And David said to Saul, please tell everybody not to lose heart. I'll handle the giant. I said to you, friends, God is raising you as a warrior if you pray deeply, deeply, deeply. And God is raising you as a warrior if you make sure every stage of your life, however small. You see, if you check the temptations that Christ encountered in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4, these are temptations whereby you are lured slowly. It's not a fight, like, it's not a, a fight where you shed blood. It's not a physical combat. It is it is, it is temptation through. It, these are tests. These are temptations. And therefore, some people fail in small, small things that involve lust. Lust and pride. Watch out. Another thing is that sh make sure you take up the shield of faith. I tell you, this is very important. Have you noticed in Ephesians chapter 6, when the Bible talks about the shield of faith, the Bible says, and above all, which means this particular weapon is prominent, is important, is conspicuous, it is required, and above all. Look at it. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, it says, and above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able Quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And above all, this is important. I see this important. I say this is very, very important. How do you build faith? Faith is not a feeling. Faith is a capacity. Faith is God's presence in your heart. Faith is a clear manifestation of God in your heart. Faith cannot be there if God is not there. It's very important to build faith. Shield of faith is important. I think that you cause us to live and never fear, lose heart. Watch out areas of losing strength. Watch out areas where you can easily lose strength. 
I say, watch out areas where you can easily lose strength. Which ones? Defilement. Areas where Satan can defile you, make you dirty. People can make you dirty. Watch out. Stop those areas. Eh? Anger. Eh? Lack of self-control, whereby you are feeling sexual feelings. The way you speak, eh? the way you feel, you don't have. Keep boundaries. Self-control is important. Another thing is lack of cover. When you wake up and fail to cover some areas in the blood of Christ and you leave them open, that is dangerous. That's very important. The Bible says in Galatians chapter, chapter 6, verse 15, the Bible says something. Uh, uh, that is chapter 5, verse 16. Mm -hmm. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. Walk. There are times you remain covered because you walk in the spirit of God. Make sure you pray. You know when I read the book, Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, the Bible says, uh, when, when John was thrown out into the island of Patmos to suffer. But the Bible says, John was in the spirit on the day of the Lord. And instead of seeing darkness and frustration, he saw the glorified Christ just next to him. And heaven, heaven was open. And I said to you, Fred, be in the spirit of God. Another thing that you cause us not to lose heart, to lose courage, to, no, you cause us to be strong is confirmation by God. Now, it is important to note that God never leave our walk without confirmation of a kind. Signs that confirm that you are his friend. Signs that confirm he loves you. Signs that confirm that he is your God. God cannot, you, you see, if today you raise to a status, maybe you are a cabinet secretary. There are signs that raise so that you are somebody, a VIP somewhere. You know, the other day we, we, we entered the airport and and I, I think it was in Kisumu, Kenya. And I remember we were with this minister, one of the ministers. And we just walked together. But at, at a place we had to split. He went to VIP Lodge. There are things that show at least you belong to, to kingdom. You belong, you are somebody. God give us kingdom. That's why in Mark, God's chapter 1, uh, Mark chapter 1, the Bible says, God says, um, the time is fulfilled. Kingdom is at heart. What God gives us is kingdom. God says, as you pray, pray this way. Our Father who is in heaven, how be your name? Thy kingdom come. When you talk about kingdom, it is actual kingdom. It's more than what we have in Kenya. President, it's more than what maybe you have, we have maybe in, in America. It is, when you talk about kingdom, it's something powerful kingdom. And one thing we need to do to know, God who calls us in a certain way as I serve him, he always confirmed that I'm not preaching something ordinary. I'm preaching message from the kingdom. Signs of the kingdom. It's good to pray deeply. It's good to pray. We've read in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse that one. Disciples ask that God stretch your head. The signs, what does, and healings may happen in your name. And the Bible says later, and disciples were able with the great signs to prove the resurrected Christ. We need that. We need that. When we have signs around, we are encouraged. Uh, the Bible says, revive us, O God, that your people may rejoice in you. Revival means extraordinary move of God. Extraordinary working of God. That's very important. Let the church operate in that level. But I think that will cause us not to lose hearts is deliberate commitment. Deliberate commitment to our work. Deliberate commitment to a specific discipline of our work. You see, friends, Bible talks about a deliberate the things that you should do. Deliberately do. You know, some people just keep quiet. They sit down. There are things that you should deliberately do. 
out of yourself take action because of who you are and who our God is. Just stand up and take an action. Stand up, declare start. Stand up and develop a discipline. There is some discipline I have and I acquired because I know I belong to God and have destiny. For instance, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24. Uh, Paul says something very unique. Mm -hmm. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receive the price? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. This is a deliberate commitment. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And therefore, Paul says in verse 26, Therefore, I run. Paul says, I, also, I run. This is my way of running. I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus, I fight not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. Deliberate commitment to a disciplined life because of, of our calling and our work and the nature of our God. That's very, very important. If you read Romans chapter 8, verse 13, Bible says, I like, that. I like this verse. I, I like it. It says something. It's a deliberate commitment. It's about, but if you live according to the flesh, who? I and you. It's our, our duty not to live according to the flesh. But if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, capital S, you use the Holy Ghost to put to death, in the Bible says, if you mortify the deeds of the flesh, to put to death the deeds of the body you live. Do you know the Holy Spirit can, can, can help you to kill a, a weakness in your body? If you can, if by the Spirit of God you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. Another thing that we need to do, do not lose timing or relaxing. Do not relax and do not lose God's timing. I said, do not relax and do not lose God's timing. You realize that in the Bible, there's a place we learned some, some times ago about Saul, about when King David lost timing. It's powerful. Uh -huh. When kings were supposed to be at wars, in you, if you read first Psalm, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, that, that David remained in Jerusalem. And one evening, David arose from his bed, just sleeping when he's supposed to be in war. Can you imagine this type of lifestyle? You are just sleeping in the morning when you're supposed to be somewhere doing a research. You are oversleeping when you're supposed to be reading. You are just resting and your mind is doing, not doing anything. Please keep your mind and your body active. Be where you are supposed to be. David was left in the house sleeping where he was supposed to be in war. And that's when he rose from the bed. Can you imagine? In even not a night. And was tempted. And that's when David fell into sexual sin and his problems and the problem of his family began there. Please watch out. Watch out. Do not, do not relax. Wait, do not relax the laws of God. Be strict. If you read Leviticus chapter 10, what happened to the sons of, uh, the, sons of the chief priests? Uh, you know, they, they, they relaxed the law. Mm? And, and, and they presented strange fire. You know, the Bible says they brought strange fire. The sons of Aaron, they brought strange fire before the Lord. Uh -huh. God was angry with it. And before the Lord, just there before the Lord, God produced fire that destroyed them before the Lord. You know, the word God's presence is repeated three times in that. They brought strange fire in God's presence. And in God's presence, God produced fire to consume them. And they died in God's presence. Leviticus 10 verse 1 and 2. Please do not relax the Lord. Because sometimes you just relax, relax. You misbehave in the church. You misbehave in your marriage. You, no, no. Those times when you relax, that's when people are tempted. Please watch out, watch out. Another thing that I just want to finish by saying this. 
Set a prayer and a ministerial program that keeps you. Set prayer and ministerial program that keeps you awake and fulfilling God's will. Set a prayer and a ministerial program. Yes, you have a calling. If you don't have a calling, I say, people, if you don't have a calling, start by obeying a certain program in the church. Start by obeying the Great Commission. Uh -huh. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. Go ye and make disciples. Pray until at least every week you make at least four or five disciples of Christ. Bring them to the church. That God you use you. Set a prayer. Make sure, maybe in the morning, make sure you pray for at least one hour. Speaking tongues, pray deeply. Make sure you, you read scriptures. Three or two or three chapters daily. Make notes. Make sure you give testimony. You know, have a prayer. Make sure you don't miss any prayer meeting. Make sure you set a pattern whereby every day you win one person to Christ. Set a prayer MSU program. The Bible says, Leviticus 6 verse 12, the fire on the altar should continue throughout. The fire. Your heart is the altar. The fire should burn throughout. Keep it. Bible said the priest was to bring fresh firewood every morning. During the, during the day, the priest would offer peace offering out there. That's very important. Another thing is take a higher position. Take a higher position. Make sure you can detect. Am I ruling over the devil or am I under fear? Am I able to resist evil? Do I have authority or I am wavering? Can you test your heart? Don't just relax. Test. If today Satan comes around, can I rebuke him? Can I destroy powers of darkness? Am I powerful? The Bible says in if, read chapter, Luke chapter 10 from verse 17 to 19. See that what Christ says there. Luke 10, 17 to 19. It finished by saying this. I, disciples went with the power to cast out demons. And Christ saw Satan fall on them. And then they came back. Christ said now, I'm giving you extra position. He says, I give you power to throw over serpents and scorpions and power over all the powers of the evil one. Not only the demons, even the chief of the demons. I give you power over him. And something else extra Christ added. Nothing will whatsoever hurt you. Christ saw devil falling like a lightning. He said, I also give something else. Come on. Can you please take a higher position? Don't be a slave. Know the key and the secret of God in your life. Remember, you need, let me something. If you pray deeply, let me tell you the truth. God will give you what we call the key and the secret, and the secret in your life. Keep it. Can you please read, when you have time, Judges chapter 16. Read about Samson. What Philistines wanted is the key to his anointing which was supposed to be hidden. It was a secret between him and God. But he reviewed it. Don't entangle yourself. Don't mix yourself. Don't relax. Do not tempt. God cannot be tempted. Don't try to joke around with the anointing that God gave you. Yes. And at the same time, live in the sacred place of God. Psalms 91 verse 1. Psalms 91 verse 1 says, He who dwells in the sacred place. I give God praise. Can you imagine God has a sacred place? What do you think the sacred place of God should be? It should be so much sacred that if you dwell there, you'll be a stranger to the devil. Devil will never understand you. Can you imagine I am dwelling in the sacred place of God? I tell you, I'll always be stretched to the devil. And I'll always confuse the devil. Because I have sacred place of God and I will dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalms 91, verse 1. That's very, very important. If you read Colossians chapter 3, maybe verse 1 to 3, Colossians 3, verse 1 to 3 it says, If you are risen with Christ, think about those things that are at the right hand of God where Christ is seated. It says this, For your lives are hidden with the Christ in God. Your lives are hidden with the Christ in God. Make sure your life is hidden with Christ in God. Don't remove it there. And make sure you read Colossians chapter 3, verse, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Finally, be sober, vigilant, 
always be sober. Bible talks about being sober in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. If you read it, Bible says be sober is a command. Sometimes people think we are living a time of grace where God has no rule. It's a rule of the Holy Spirit that a brother who is saved, a sister who is a Christian, should live a life whereby you are sober and vigilant. In 1 Peter 5, 8, Bible says, uh, that is, in Ephesians chapter 5, 15, Bible says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Is that's very important if you read Peter uh, 5 8, it says something be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. Let's assist him, be steadfast in faith. That's very, very important. And finally, remain focused, keep your mission clear. Don't be confused. Remain focused. You have a mission in this life. God has called you. You are not supposed to, to, to be disorganized or to be scattered all over. You have a mission. Know it clearly. Don't mix up your mission. Paul gave a testimony of his mission when, when he said, <laughs> when he said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, as I finish now. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellency of knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss, and verse 9, and be found in him, mm -hmm, not having my own righteousness. And you, you continue on, you realize, uh -huh, verse 12, he says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I bless on that I may lay hold of that that for which Christ has reigned for me. That's very important. It's important as a Christian that remain focused. Keep your mission very clear. Don't be confused. Somebody tried to confuse Paul in Acts 21 verse 11. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bowed his own hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall Jews at Jerusalem bite the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the house of Gentiles. And Paul said to him, something Paul said to him, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bowed, but also to die at Jerusalem for the, names, for the name of the Lord. That is Acts 21, verse 12 and verse 13. Paul Remain focused in mission. I hope you'll be able to revise, go through again, part one, part two, part three. Let not your heart be troubled. I release peace on you and I rebuke the schemes of Satan. I cover your heart, your mind in the blood of Christ. And whatever has been attacking you, we will never attack you again. By the word of God, I raise the hedge of fire allowed you and whatever pertains to you. In Christ we pray and believe.